What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Dan here. I'd like to welcome you guys back to Back to the Future, the game, and episode number four, Double Visions. Now, I know it's been quite a few days, coming up on like four days here since I last posted episode three, but as you guys know, it was Easter weekend and it was pretty crazy for me, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to record, but we're here, we're back, we're ready to keep this going. I know you guys are loving this series, so I'm more than happy to bring it back to you guys. But it does help if you could slap that like button. Like I said before, let's try and get 500 likes on this one. That's going to be the goal for most of the videos anyway. If we can do it, that's awesome. But either way, guys, I hope you enjoy it. So sit back, relax, and let's get started on episode number four. Citizen Plus? Citizen Plus? <laughs> Uh-oh, that's not good. Are we like in one of the... Or in a waiting room? Or like, it's more like a cell, I guess. Someone's locked up all my stuff. I'll never get that combination on my own. Alright, we gotta figure out the combination somehow. Make sure the McFly boy is prepped for his Citizen Plus treatment by the time I finish with my husband. How is Citizen Brown? I'm afraid it's worse than we imagined. He's gone completely antisocial. Darn. We're using every tool at our disposal to snap him out of it. But I fear that nothing short of a complete personality rebuild will bring our leader back to us. And it's all McFly's fault? Unbelievable, isn't it? One teenage hooligan has brought Hill Valley to the brink of ruin. Ah, well. Let me know when he's ready. I'll be tending to Citizen Brown. I gotta get out of here and rescue Doc. Okay. Can we have a word with somebody? Martin? Ah, is that you? Who else would it be? Where are you? Back in the garage. What are you doing in the Citizen Plus ward? Edna threw me in here. She can't do that to my son. How can I help? Um... Know anything about cracking combination locks? Sorry, son. I'm more of a peeping Tom than a safe cracker. Yeah, but you could look at stuff... Like, I don't know, maybe you could, like, rewind the footage of when they put it in here. They must have something opening and closing that lock, yeah? I don't see any other way out of here. I'm gonna have to ask this guy for something else. Hello? What now? Why is all my stuff locked in a cage? In order to ensure that Citizen Plus patients don't injure themselves, their belongings are placed in a locked box until the completion of their Citizen Plus treatment. Injure themselves? It's a very intensive process. Some people can't handle it. Can I take a look at my stuff for a second? Why? I, uh, want to make sure my guitar neck isn't getting bent. What? Come on, man. My parents spent a fortune on that thing. Fine. Back away from the door, sir. Wow, is that really all it took? There. How's the guitar? I guess it's okay. Good. Okay, now we can go to... We can go to George and see what he saw, yeah. if you can see that. How can I help, son? Come on, go there. Stop. I tried to peek over the guard's shoulder to get the combination, but he's too tall. Over his shoulder? Hold on. What? I may have it on tape. Exactly. Zoom, enhance. Zoom, enhance. Ha! What? The camera was high enough to see over his shoulder. Nice work, Dad. The Ballin. is two left, eight right, 18 left, 32 right. All right. Nice. Hey, your guitar. I'm sorry I tried to throw it out. Yeah, the guitar is pretty cool, but this is what I care about. No fair making your dad all misty, son. All right, so we got everything we needed.
I'll check it out. Jen? Hey, Jennifer. I gotta get her attention. All right, well, that's easy. We'll take the guitar. I can't plug my... Oh, never mind. Um... Can we try the squawk box, maybe? See if Dad. we can. How can I help, son? Could you let me talk to Jennifer? Jennifer Parker? Yeah, she's in the room next door. Let's see, that'd be waiting room beta. Got it. You're all patched in, son. Jennifer. Martin, is that you? Where are you? I'm over here, in the camera. Oh, Martin, aren't you in enough trouble already? Trouble? Jen, what are you talking about? You know, with all the drinking and the PDAs. Jennifer, oh, what's wrong with you? You sound strange. I used to be strange, Martin. But thanks to my First Citizen Plus treatment, I'm well on my way to becoming an average well-adjusted teenager. Uh-oh. Citizen Plus? Oh, no. Jen, not you, too. Her door is open? Hey, do you know what time it is? No. Didn't they give you some kind of digital watch when you were done with all that brainwashing? The Citizen Plus watch? I won't get one of those for another five or six treatments. Rats. Why is your door open? Now that I'm finished with my Citizen Plus treatment, I'm free to go whenever I want. I'm just waiting for the nice guard to escort me out. Hey, on your way out, do you think you could help me break out of here? Oh, I couldn't do that, Martin. It's against the rules. Damn. I know what I need to do. Could you hang around for a few minutes? It's nice to have someone to talk to. I'll be here until the guard comes for me. Then I'll really have to tell him about how you're hijacking the cameras. Oh, for God's Come sake. Come on, don't be a narc. I'm not a narc. I'm a good citizen. Damn, is there any way I could play the guitar for her, though, to kind of get her back? Yes, it's got an auxiliary in. Okay, Jane, here's a little something I think you're going to like. At least, I hope you still do. Martin? Jennifer. Martin. Martin? What are you doing? What's going on here? I have no idea, sir. I was minding my own business when all of a sudden a horrible noise started coming out of that camera. Well, that's not right. Yeah, well, neither is this. Oh! No one scrambles my brain. You hear me? No one. I'm Jennifer Parker, rock and roller. Jen? Oh, yeah, right. Jen, no time for small talk, McFly. We need to get you disguised so we can walk out of here. Nice. Calvin Klein underwear? Really? <laughs> How do I look? A little short for a stormtrooper, but it'll have to do. Come on. <laughs> Love the references. Sorry about that little cut, guys. My game minimized to tell me about an update. Okay, Hotshot, what's next? Well, not calling me that. Rescue Citizen Brown, get the hell out of here and get things back to the way they're supposed to be. Whatever, just as long as I get to break some stuff. I've got a lot of pent-up hostility right now, you know? Miss Parker, gotta, gotta blend in. Yeah. I'm here to escort you to the lobby. Your father's waiting for you. Can he wait? I was hoping that this attractive young man could take me on a tour of the facilities. I'm afraid I really must insist, miss. Relax, Jennifer. I've got everything under control. Really? Really. Okay, then. But first... What was that for? For saving me, dummy. 
Let's go, officer. You know, I'm probably gonna have to write you up for a PDA violation. Don't bite me. What? <laughs> Rock and roll. All right, we're out. We blended in. We gotta get him free from that. Can I have some of that? Feels like I haven't eaten in years. No, that's tannins. He's not allowed to eat it until he's taken his pacification pill. We tried to give it to him an hour ago, but he still hasn't swallowed it. Let me try. I can be pretty persuasive. No. These guys all sound like Melvins. Okay, we'll hold the phone. You see, he takes a sip from the soda. So we gotta, we gotta find Biff's room. Wow, they've really got this door locked up tight. I wonder what sick freak they've got in here. Ah! It's Biff. I should have known. We need his pill. Let's talk to him. Hi, Biff. What do you want, butthead? Oh, it's Looks broken. Like your intercom's busted. Eh, just as well. It'd probably be just a bunch of swearing and mixed metaphors anyway. You want out of here, big guy? Guess they don't work. You don't just let them out. Hey, Biff. Guess who your guard is? Peekaboo! The guard says I'm not supposed to give you any food until you swallow your pill. I'd never get my hand under there. All right, I'm gonna need a tool to get that out. Let's go see. No improvement, Citizen Edna. Shall I re? See that it? That seems to work. Ooh, I get it. Okay, watch this. Okay, then we'll do the same thing. I Eat your pill. He'll I'm drop it on the newspaper. There you go. He thinks he's being a smart ass. Then we take the newspaper back. That's pretty cute. That's pretty clever. Spit. Oh well. Then we take the pill and put it in the soda. Hey, is that a public display of affection over there? What? Uh, sorry, it was just a shadow. Stop goofing around and get back to work. <laughs> yes, sir. Take a sip, bruv. We need you napping. I wonder how fast acting it would be. For video game purposes, probably pretty fast. Jeez, what have they been feeding Biff? Horse tranquilizers? No kidding, eh? You, God! Who, me? I, I mean, me? Yes, you! As you can see, that slacker of a technician is sleeping on the job again. Please be a dear and tend to the Citizen Plus control panel, will you? Uh, sure. Okay, Doc, I'm in. Now, how do I get you out of here without turning you into a vegetable? Oh my god, okay. Sorry about the discomfort, my love. But what Jeez, can we do? Where's the off button on this thing? Hey, an equalizer, at least. I think it's an equalizer. Optics? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Optics? That might not be right. Olfactory? I think I know what that means. What the? Looks like the aroma tanks have clogged themselves again. Oh, thank you. I hadn't noticed that. Come on, make yourself useful. I'm sorry about the delay, dear. This would go a lot easier if you just gave up this madness about time machines and altering the past. You should concentrate on the future. 
There is no future. You won't think that in a few more hours. Anna, please, think about the consequences of your actions. Gastrosensory? I don't want to... I don't want to blow him up. Oh, God. Tactile. Oh, uh, sorry. Wrong one. Sorry, buddy. Volume. I don't Volume. know if that's a good idea. Finally, a word I can understand. Put it up to 11. There must be a specific order you're supposed okay. to do them in. That moved him a few inches. Maybe I can blast him right out the door. Where's Martin? Don't worry, dear. After we're done repairing your damaged mind, we'll fix young Mr. McFly, too. I'll get him a burger later. I am not doing that again. Okay, so... Do you think? Okay, let's, can we back out? All right, let me try something. They're both down there, so maybe if we go into this room. When did I lose control? Check. Sibilance. Sibilance. What was that? Let me try this. We know it works. Do you think this will work? Oh my god, dude. We're going to blast them right out the door. It's going to be epic. <laughs> Ready for this big power cord. What was that? You! What's up, noob? What are you doing? Get my friend out of here, you nutcase. <laughs> was it powerful okay, enough? That was a little less dramatic than I had expected. Whoa. Oh! Just wheel him out of here now! Another power cord! Power cord! Whoa! Let's go, Your Honor. What? I can't hear you! Go out them! Dude, that dude would be eluded, electrocuted! Hacks! <laughs> Now. now we wait for the guards to clear out so we can make a break for your time machine. Hey, it's my mom. Hey. Don't talk to her. She could give us away. Where is the DeLorean anyway? I had the wreck towed to my secret lab near Clayton Ravine. Clayton Ravine? As in Clara Clayton? Why? Is that significant? Well, Clara's kind of supposed to be your wife, so, yeah. Fascinating. Because, yeah, she went off Can of we it. Go help? Once we go back and change history, none of this will ever happen. Oh! I guess. What the heck was Edna doing to you back there? She was trying to rebuild my personality from the ground up, erasing the parts she didn't like. Harsh. She slapped the shit out of those two guys. Oh! All right, Dad. Nice! That was dope. No offense, Your Honor, but why'd you marry Edna anyway? She's... she's kind of crazy. Yes, now. But back when we were first dating, her madness was tempered by an ironclad sense of right and wrong. At least, that's how it seemed to me at the time. Mom! Dad! No! They'll be fine. Once we repair the time stream, none of this will ever have happened. I guess you're right.
Looks like the coast is clear. For now. Great. Yeah. Let's go fix the DeLorean. I'm afraid I'll have to do that without you, Martin. What? Why? Well, from what little I understand of time travel, if you help me rebuild the time machine, your presence in the repair efforts could cause some sort of temporal paradox after we return to 1931. So what am I supposed to do? Just hang out here in Bizarro Hill Valley until you fix the time machine? Exactly. But don't worry. If things work out according to plan, you won't even notice I'm gone. You know, for a second there, you sounded almost as confusing as the real Doc. See? We're making progress already. See you soon, Martin. Good luck, Your Honor. Oh, and you might want to stay off the streets for a few seconds. Stay off the street? Citizen Brown? Damn it. Because he's going to come back with it. What do you think? That's all we got to do. He's not coming back, you know. What are you talking about? Emmett, without me to guide him, he's almost useless. D just Before as much as you. Before I found him, he was a miserable failure who never finished anything. But with me to inspire him, look at what we've built! <laughs> Let's be savage. Not the only inspiration of Doc's life, you know. In my timeline, he married one of the sweetest women of the 19th century. Sweetness. Yeah. Emmett needs discipline to stay focused. He's so easily distracted. You think you've inspired Doc? I'll have you know that without you, Emmett Brown is destined to build a time-traveling DeLorean and a flying time train. Preposterous. Emmett couldn't even build a dog feeder without me to guide him. Yeah, well, he did that, too. I can't, all I gotta do is go through it. Yeah, you've inspired him, all right. Inspired him to turn Hill Valley into a bunch of uptight dorks. I wouldn't expect a delinquent like you to understand. Dude, just give her a rock okay, bottom and call Honor. it a day. I'm starting to get a little concerned here. There it is! One second I'm in the present, the next I'm six months in the past. Amazing. Six months? It took you six months to repair the time machine? Six months, my family fortune, and a sketchy deal with a gang of Libyan nationals. But it was all worth it for this moment. Ha-ha! Emmett, don't do this. You need help. Oh, blow it out of your exhaust, poor dear. Now that I've escaped into the past, your pack of divorce lawyers can't... <gasps> Mark, how long have you been waiting for me? A couple of minutes, maybe? That's curious. I set the repair time circuits to arrive only a couple of seconds after I left. Oh, well. I'm sure there's no need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration on the time circuits. Here. What's this? Clothes for our trip. We can't have you traipsing around 1931 in that ridiculous outfit. Wait, our trip? You didn't think I was going to let you erase the worst mistake of my life without my help, did you? Oh! <laughs> Shots fired! <Fine>. Leave. <laughs> oh, man. I run this town! I don't know if she does anymore, dude. Let's we'll see what happened. I feel like something did happen. Time circuit said for August 26, 1931. You ready to go, Your Honor? Call me, Don. There's still another episode to go and still a lot of episodes left as well. Something went wrong. That's why you probably shouldn't use time machines. Frankenstein. This I've... is where I last saw him. You, teenage you. You were headed this way, arm in arm with Edna. Ugh. Luckily, my erstwhile wife was never the type to kiss on a first date. If we work fast and stay focused, we can see to it that there, I mean, our relationship never moves beyond the hand-holding stage. Well, will you look at that? 
the old town is here. Very cool. I haven't thought about this place in years. The missus made me tear it down back in 71. Said the movies were corrupting the younger generation. It was all nonsense, of course. I spent countless evenings here in my youth, and it never turned me into a hoodlum. Say, remember Public Enemy? Why, you dirty rat, no good yellow bellied stool? It never did matter to see Frankenstein, though. That's the problem. That's what caused the whole problem, remember? We've got to get young you to see Frankenstein. Right, of course. The film that was supposed to set off a chain reaction in my imagination, inspire me with a notion that would launch my scientific career. You've still got no memory of what that notion was? Well, how could I? It happened in the brain of a different Emmett Brown. An Emmett Brown now erased by the shifting sands of time. Luckily for us, I do know something about my own brain, having lived in it for the past 70 plus years. Once we get my younger selfie inspired by that movie, nothing will distract him from his proper... <gasps> Great Scott, will you look at that? The town square? It's just like I remember it, only dirtier. Oh, the old courthouse. Come on now, Doc, you need to go oh. inside and check it out. First rule of time travel, Doc, never allow your other self to catch sight of you. It could cause reality to collapse or something. You mean? Right behind you. Don't peek. Go on. I'll let you know when you're gone. And don't forget your Carl Sagan. The billions and billions guy? The suspected arsonist. Huh? Just go with it. Wow, okay, we actually have to go to Emmett and let him know. I mean, young Emmett. Look, he's all groomed for his date. That's got to be what's happening. Sonny, you do show up at the oddest moments. Where have you been hiding? Oh, you know, here and there, you're a little hard to pin down yourself. I went looking for you last night, but... I believe I was off entertaining a beautiful lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never really got a chance to thank you. Well, I'm sure you would have escaped Kid on your own. Kid? Oh, sure, I'm grateful for that, but no, I'm talking about Edna. It's funny to think of now, but until that crisis, I actually thought Edna and I disliked one another. <laughs> Imagine. You do. <laughs> Trust that first impression. Yeah, well, Go with that. Sometimes first impressions are right. The thing is, you shouldn't let Edna distract you from, you know, the business at hand. Finishing your project for the expo and going to see Frankenstein. Oh, sure. I'm far too busy for movies these days. But, uh... And as for my project, it's practically done. The rocket car? The rocket car? Boy, are you out of date. I've junked the rocket car. But... More trouble than it's worth. I'll never figure out a propulsion system that does what I want it to do. And besides, its social utility is practically non-existent. You'll figure it out, Emmett. You only need a bolt of inspiration, that's all. Maybe if you went to a... The mental alignment meter is a much more worthy project. The what? It was Edna's idea, and she's really been cracking the whip to get me to complete it in time for the expo. Emmett, I'm a little confused here. What day is it? Why, it's opening day. The opening day oh, of the no. expo. Which reminds me, I'd better skedaddle back to the lab. If Edna catches me dawdling, there'll be heck to pay. Catch you around, Crockett. October 12th? Doc? This is bad. We missed the mark. That's what happened with the delay. It was supposed to be a couple of seconds, but it was minutes. And, and, that, and back in 31, it's been months. Come to think of it, it is a bit brisk for August. Oh, we're two months late. The expo's about to start and Teenage U is already in over his head with Edna. I always did have a tendency to plunge into things. Good job, Doc. Let's plunge into the DeLorean and get to the right date. No, it's far too risky. Remember how I was late picking you up in 86? Yeah. That should have been a tip off. Something is horribly wrong with the time circuits. And the problem appears to be getting worse. If we try to jump now, we could find ourselves stranded in a Cenozoic age. Oh, who oh, worse, the Mesozoic. Then we're stuck? For the time being. I'll look into the problem and see what I can do. In the meantime, 
you can go to work on the other problem. Right. I'll go to the lab and see if I can talk teenage you out of... Impossible. If young me is already as infatuated as you say, you're not going to be able to talk him out of anything. Believe me, I remember. Better to focus on the more clear-headed half of the couple. Edna? Edna? Where can I find her? Where do you think? I'll drive. The DeLorean should still function adequately as a means of conveyance in the first three dimensions. But won't it stand out a little bit? You know? Cars of the- Oh, but that's- The Expo is- Cars of the future! If I saw that right. Well, there's Hill Valley of the future and there's Hill Valley of the past. Well, maybe we can do the future. You You're are like, right. There she is. My soon-to-be ex-future wife is nothing if not predictable. Do I really have to talk to her? I mean, couldn't I just hang out until you fix the time circuits and... Oh. I'll talk to her. <laughs> you better get the DeLorean out of sight before someone... Hey, you! Quit blocking the drive! All Car of the Future contestants need to report to the North Tent! Why not? Good luck! It's the guy I picked a fight with. Or, no, well, you know what I mean. Miss, I'm Mr. Steele, his girl. <laughs> uh, let's go have a word with Edna, see what she has to say. Spell it B R O W N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love. Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual. Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting-edge technology. That's right. And to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward-thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear. Mr. Crockett! You do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? It, uh, this is going to be one of those things where you're not going to be able to say anything. It'll just change it. Watch. Need to... Whatever it is, See? I hope you don't have to deal with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Uh. Have you seen Emmett? Uh, yes. Yeah, just now, in the town square. Oh, then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think, he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. I've never known anyone like him, so oblivious to his own potential. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought I didn't even like him. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. I don't get it. I mean, Emmett's nice and all, but he's not exactly the kind of guy that has girls swarming all over him. Well, I'm not your average girl. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Crockett, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Dude, we gotta, like, look at this guy. Like, we're, okay, look, Marty's already Mr. Steal Your Girl, so why can't we steal Emmett's girl? And just, just take one for the team, Marty. Take one for the team. Let's talk to this guy. You know he's gonna hey, rage. Excuse me. Ew! Yeah. When does the expo Not open? Until tonight. Anybody without official business here, please get off the grounds! You got official business here? Yeah. Is your wife here? Well, stay oh! out of the way of the workers. <laughs> I know you. you. familiar. Do I know you? Yes. Uh, nope. Dude. Dude, let me say I'm Mr. Steal Your Girl. Please, that'd be so fantastic. <laughs> what do we have in the inventory? The notebook. Well? I talked to her. And? She says she knows what she's looking for, and it's you. But it can't be me. It wasn't me. Marty, we don't belong together. You don't have to tell me that. 
find out exactly what her requirements are. I can almost guarantee you that I don't fit them. All right, we'll talk to her again then. See what she says. Get her to open up a little bit more about her ideal man. She changed him. Damn. You said that Emmett fits your bill of requirements for a man. Yes. What would that list be exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Crockett. You know that? Well, his physical appearance for one thing. Emmett may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. And he's completely devoted to me. That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. God, she sounds high Beautiful maintenance. As a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain, I see. And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Uh, just curious, just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? Um, all right, let's leave her to That's her vices. all the questions I got. Very well, then. Oh! Hey, Artie. You seen my Orioli? You mean this? Yes, yeah, thanks. She gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. This has got to... Convince Edna that Emmett's cheating on her. Ah, good. You're back. Give me the full report. She says she likes you because you've got a virtuous mind, you look good in a suit, and you're completely faithful to her. Damn. She's got me dead to rights. Well, you'll just have to find a way to change her mind. I'll be here if you need any help. Do you need any help? Edna doesn't seem to care much for Trixie Trotter. She never could get past the fact that Trixie had been Kid Tannen's mall. I feel like we need to get a picture with Trixie and Emmett. Let's have a word with Trixie. See if we can see, do something with that. Mm. To all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. Oh. To all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Artie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, uh, forget about it. I'm trying to. Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Right. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? Yes, actually. Uh. At the expo, silly. Technology for a better tomorrow and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. That's what we need to do. Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Audie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Then you see where I'm coming from. He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? Sometimes a guy's got to resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Ah. Uh. Edna might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni, Muse of Progress. Damn. All right, maybe we should talk with Edna again, see what she has to say. <clears throat> Back again, Mr. Crockett? What can I help you with? Well, I was thinking. I found out about Trixie Trotter. Yes? Apparently they made her some sort of queen of the festival. Techni, the Muse of Progress. They didn't. 
Well, they said this expo would give Hill Valley a reputation. I didn't realize this is what they meant. What have you got against Trixie? It's the idea of it. Allowing our city to be represented by a woman like that. I won't stand for it. As a socially conscious citizen, I demand you discharge that muse. Trixie? What's wrong with her? Oh, she's hardly qualified for an honorific post at a public event. Look, lady, she fits the costume, she's an American citizen, and she managed to memorize all her lines. What more qualifications do you want? Oh, these people are impossible. Why do you want to get Trixie fired? One simply can't allow women like that to attain positions of respect in society. It creates a very bad precedent for the future. Does it? But try telling it to this poor sap. She's got him completely steamrolled. That's how they operate. Is it? Still, I could get her discharged if I had the goods on her. No doubt a woman like that has left a trail of scandal, and I'd find it if I were still a reporter. But I haven't got time to do the legwork now. I'm too busy with Emmett and our... His invention. Hmm. So you wouldn't hesitate to get Trixie fired from her job? If I had the goods on her. She's obviously got her employer completely bamboozled. The only way to snap him out of his spell would be to show him something really shocking. Interesting. Okay. That's all the questions I... Very well, then. How about you? Have you got any questions for me? Why are you uh, a bitch? No? Then kindly let me pass. I'm afraid I can't. Oh, this is abs- Same old, same old. I didn't even notice Q-Ball was over here. Hey, pal. Oh, jeez. This guy again. Funny, I was gonna say the same thing. Shouldn't you be in jail? Will you be playing piano for Trixie later? Nah. Why not? Cause Little Miss Goody Two Shoes thinks she's too respectable for cue ball these days. You seem kind of angry about Trixie. Angry? Listen, kid, me and Trixie go way back. I know stuff about her that even kid doesn't know. Stuff that curl your socks. Really? Oh yeah. And now to see her flouncing around the place, making like her stink don't smell, it just, well, it just cheeses me off, you know. So what's so, uh, toe-curling about Trixie's past? Yeah, like I'm gonna tell you. Oh, come on. No. Tell you what, I'll tell you something embarrassing about me first. Like what? Dude, that's pretty bad. That's messed up. It's true, technically it happened. I'm gonna go. Like, go big or go the home. Influence of alcohol. My mom made a pass at me. Ooh. All right, Junior. You. There win. you go. That was pretty embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as this. Is that Trixie? Yep. She's not wearing much. So. No kidding. She did a lot of these artistic postcards a few years ago. I got a whole set of them. Can I um have one? I don't know. You ain't gonna do nothing bad with it, are you? Hey, I promise. I'll only use it for the greater good. Wow. Okay. Thanks, mate. And we're done with him. Hang loose, pal. You talk funny, mister. Alright, now we can bring the picture, which is pretty savage. It's pretty mean that we do this to her, but... You might want to take a look at this. Why in the world would I be interested in... Oh, what have we here? It's not even that bad. Mr. McFly! It appears your muse has been inspiring more than progress. Trixie? Oh, no, no, no. What are you doing with a dirty postcard? What is she doing in a dirty postcard? I swear, Mr. McFly, if that doesn't convince you that Trixie Trotter is unfit to represent Hill I Valley... I don't need you to lecture me about who I can or can't hire, Miss Strickland. Trixie's darn good at what she does. I don't care if she was once... 
the winsome wench of Winnipeg. <laughs> the past doesn't matter to... <laughs> that moose doe. Trixie? Canadian moose doe. What is it, Audie? You know I don't like to pry, but what state did you grow up in? Province, Manitoba. Why? Yeah, dog. Not oh, she's not American. An American. See, darling, the charter specifically states that the expo's hostess must be a U.S. citizen. So, if you're really a Canadian, I'm being fired. You're firing me. I don't want to. Yeah. Take it back. Well, I'm glad somebody's listening to reason. That's that is pretty mean, and I'm responsible. Especially to a fellow Canadian. Let's talk. Oh, she's ready to shoot. Let's do it. Let's do it. Alright, Trixie. Trixie? I'll do it! I'll make that blue nosed bitty eat her heart out. That's great. I got it all planned out. When Emmett shows oh, up, we gotta do it my way. Huh? I'm no good with improvising, and I ain't gonna memorize no lines. But I was in this play once, the Parlor Maid's Predicament. I figure I could lift a scene from that. Okay. Only I need a few props. Why am I not surprised? Some furs, a big diamond. It doesn't have to be real, understand? That makes it easier. And something from this friend of yours, Emmett. Has he got a photo album? I don't know. Uh, probably. Better bring it to me. Furs, a diamond, and Emmett's photo album. And then? Sit back and watch the fur fly. Interesting. That's a very, very interesting amount of items. There you go. Good news. I think Trixie's gonna go along with my scheme. Pursue whatever strategies you like. But please, don't tell me the details. Well, I gotta go there. Any idea what your teenage self is doing right now? Unless I miss my guess, he's in the garage frantically working on his latest invention and cursing because he can't quite get it to work. Damn! Have you figured out what's wrong with the time circuits? Not sure. Possibly. It seems to me to be a simple wiring issue, but I'm double-checking to make sure. All the basic equipment appears to be functional. Um, any chance I could borrow the DeLorean? I want to drop in on young you at the lab. Well, I don't know. The time circuits... Listen, I promise, I won't take it to 88. Even so, I'm worried about letting it out of my sight while it's still behaving unpredictably. Tell you what, I'll take it on a test drive one minute into the past. If it passes the test, I'll let you borrow it. I thought you just said you don't want to mess with the time circuits. You did that in front of everybody, too. It worked. Didn't it? I'm afraid not. In fact, the discrepancy appears to be getting worse. I arrived six hours ago. Oh, too bad. I didn't want to risk undoing any of the work you've done thus far, so I kept out of sight. But the time lag wasn't entirely a waste. I stopped by the hardware store and bought the parts for a chronometric analyzer. A what? A diagnostic device. See, I plug it into the time circuits and set them to cycle. When the green light goes off, I should have the data I'll need to understand the scope of the problem. Hey, no driving the exhibits off the lot! Looks like you'll have to find another set of wheels if you want to get to the lab. The truck over there, just take it. But it's Cue Ball's truck, isn't it? He gave me a picture of the wench of Winnipeg. Respect. <laughs> I probably have to no talk. keys. I'll have to find my wheels somewhere. Let's have a word with him. Maybe we can get... Seriously, I am not... No, not the truck. Talk to Q's. Hey, buddy. Oh, good. He's back. I was gonna say, his teeth look a bit green. What kind of stuff have they got you hauling here? How the heck would I know? Electro this, robo that, dynamo the other. It's all Greek to me. Hey. What's with your teeth? My teeth? Yeah, they're green. I don't know what you're talking about. Seriously, man, what's going on with your teeth? It's nothing. Nothing! I... I... Oh, crap. What's wrong? It's these. Dr. Frinkle's algae cakes? 
A crate of them fell off the truck while I was unloading it, and uh, I just can't stop eating them. How was I to know they turned my teeth green? Well, the algae part might have been a clue. Please don't rat me out to Audie, okay? I really need this job. No problem, but you better let me keep the cakes. Sure thing, pal. Okay, so we got the cakes. They had the trouble, cue ball. That's what I'm trying to do. The hell is this? I wish the courthouse did look like that in 1981. Pleasant dreams, Hill Valley. And the Expo would like to remind you that you can find everything you need to transform your dreams into reality at Hal's Hardware. Hal's Hardware, serving our fair city since 1895. Oh, My skateboard! wouldn't be built so shoddily. Uh, hi, Miss Strickland. I was just... Break what you like, Mr. Crockett. It's no skin off my nose. Just keep away from Emmett's booth. Speaking of whom, I'd better go see what's keeping him. Um... I'll go check on him for you. I was just heading there anyway. No, you weren't. The last thing he needs is another distraction at the 11th hour. But... Tut -tut. Not another word. I've got the rest of the day all mapped out. Miss Strickland! I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. Heavens, you shaved off your hair, but Carl Sagan? I'd like a word with you, if I may. I'm not sure it would be seemly for me to be seen in the company of an alleged arsonist. I think it may be in your best interest. You see, I know what you're up to. Let's go somewhere where we can talk privately. Go. I'll keep her occupied till you get back. Technically, he could walk there. A skateboard's not going to be that much further. Hang on, Emmett. Hope you're ready for a big breakup. Here we go. Oh, he's going <laughs> to... He's skitching. All that to get a skateboard, huh? Emmett? Kid? Thanks again for your assistance, Detective Parker. Detective? What the hell is Kid doing here? Nothing criminal, I assure you. I was just getting a mind map of Mr. Tannen for our exhibition at the Expo. The authorities wouldn't allow Edna and I to stage a demonstration of the mental alignment meter with a violent felon, but this little baby is just as good. Okay, let's see now, what's next? Check the stew, sort the maps, ooh, I almost forgot that. Edna really is cracking the whip, isn't she? Well, yes, but she's got my best interests at heart. Without her, I can get so distracted. Did she send you down here to check up on me? Uh, yeah, she wanted to come herself, but... She's busy too, I know. Well, you're a poor substitute for Edna's lovely features, but make yourself at home. Thanks. No thanks are necessary. Without you, I'd never be where I am now. In love with a woman of my dreams. And a mere six hours from my first public triumph as a scientist. Wait a minute. Six hours? Jumping Jehoshaphat, I'm running out of time! How does the mental alignment thing work? Here, I'll show you. Hey. The test subject wears this mind mapping helmet, which probes the brain by measuring fluctuations in skin conductance and electrical resistance on the surface of the parietal lobe. Uh-huh. When I turn on the mind mapping helmet with this radio switch, the subject is exposed to a series of visual stimuli intended to provoke a series of positive or negative responses as indicated by these lights on the helmet. Hey, is that? As the responses are recorded, they're relayed to this special typewriter, which prints out a punch card that represents the subject's mind map. All I see is a bunch of holes. Well, to you, maybe. But to our mental alignment meter, this mind map is nothing less than a peek into your subconscious. Observe, as I place your mind map into the M.A.M. Lay it back. Is that machine calling me a slacker? No, your own physiological responses did. So I need to. I need to borrow the helmet. Grab this. It's right there. If I'm gonna take Emmett's mind map, I better replace it with another one. Um. Can we just do it on him? So let's take a look at. Tannen's mind map. The mind of a degenerate criminal. A 
This kid Tannen's mind map, as captured by our mind map helmet. You could tell he's a criminal just by looking at this? No, but when it's fed into the mental alignment meter... <laughs> Weird. Weird nothing. It's science. All right, so we got to pick the right stuff then. All right, so we're going to turn the switch on. Wait, first thing we're going to do actually is twist the knob. Ew. Ugh. Did the clamp fall off again? Um, yeah. Put it back on. Oh, I don't even know why I keep that bacteria tank around. Every time the tube, it takes a couple... All right, there you go. He's in the nasty, nasty side of stuff. So we'll turn on the, the switch, slide advancer. Nothing happened. All right, we gotta turn it on. That button. So turn it on. Okay. It's in the neutral. We'll just go ahead and open the clamp. Ew. Okay, next next one on the on the list. So she doesn't like it doesn't like Edna, that's what we're making it seem. What do we got? Alright, hold on. Wilkes booth, right? Wait, I know that. That's John Wilkes Booth, the guy that shot Lincoln. So uh, I guess right. he's supposed to be a negative figure. So, we're going to go ahead and stew the pot. Or you know what I mean. Clear it up. Ugh. All right. And how do I make it good again? I'm trying to remember. I do it again, right? Just the same thing? Mm, that smells good. Excellent. All right. Next picture. We're gonna have to make them not like the cop, right? Let me just see, let me see what he says about him. It's Danny Parker, he's a cop, so I guess since. Okay, that's what I figured. Okay, so now we'll make it nasty in here. And then as soon as you hit the next slide, Ooh. it changes everything up. So this is kind of a grind, but it's kind of interesting how they do this. A little bit more. How goes the bacteria farm? Not so hot to keep the... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. The switch. Ew. A lot of work for this, though, isn't it? Just to get a placard of what we need. All right, slide advancer. All right, this is a tannin. All right, all right, I wish you could skip that. All right, and then we'll go ahead and... I love how that's all it takes is smell the odor. Ah. Oh. Okay, do it again. It's a bit of a grind though, isn't it? Like you have to go through all these steps just to get the right mm, response. That smells good. There we go. We'll mark, that's, yeah, a photo of a tannin. Next one. Is Trixie up next? I can't remember, child. Right. Right now he likes the children, but I don't think Edna likes children. But I might need to get him to hate the child. Hey, I remember that picture from Edna's apartment in 1986. It's a kid and a relative of Edna, so it's... Pr there you go. Okay, that's what I figured. Okay, so, let's dirty it up in here. Make them hate kids. Ew. It's kind of ironic. Ew. There we go. 
All right, so negative figure for the kid. And then it should be Trixie. She should be the last one. So. We'll go ahead and feed him some, snoo some stew. Or you know what I mean? Make him smell that stew. Because that'll just put her over the top. I think the Trixie one will just troll him. Ugh. Mmm, that smells good. It's like he forgets he's wearing it. Is that it? Alright, let's take a look at that puppy. I think that should get us. Oh, it's broken. Hey, Emmett, I think your mind map test is broken. Oh, oh that switch just keeps shoring out on me. No time to fix it now. I'll have to take care of it at the expo. Looks like I'm not going to be doing any more mind maps. I guess I'll test this out and hope for the best. See, I think we got the right one if it's shorting out. They wouldn't have let us do that if it was going to short out. We'll do a test. Oops. Bingo. Now Emmett's mind map is as bad as Tannen's. Now all I have to do is swap this out with Emmett's original mind map and Emmett's own machine will do him in. Sorry, man. All right, so take his, switch the old one out. Okay, Emmett, get ready to meet the new you. Hey, what? I almost left behind my mind map card. We're going to show it off at the expo as a rare example of a model citizen. Edna kill me if I forgot that. She might kill you anyway when she gets a look at that mind map. <laughs> Once Emmett gets to the expo, I'll try to figure out how to get him to put his card in the mental alignment meter. But for now, I'd better concentrate on making Emmett a slob who cheats on his girlfriend. All right. Convince Edna that e Emmett is a slob. Is there anything else we could do here? What's this? That's a can of used motor oil, rocket fuel waste, and assorted chemical sludge left over from my abandoned rocket car. Gross. Accounting doesn't enter into it, but it is disgusting. Would you mind disposing of it on your way out? Uh, sure. Now we gotta accidentally trip, maybe? Throw it at him because we're just jer jerks like that. I can't see him. Hold on. There we go. Is that going to work? Hey, Emmett. I've got a... Whoa. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, no. What the heck? Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. Your, your suit's ruined. Edna's going to be royally PO'd. Wrong. What? When Edna gave me this suit, I realized that the probability of me keeping it clean was infinitesimally remote. So, I spent a few hours whipping up this. Oh, for God's Whoa. sake. What was that? A chemical compound capable of wiping the grime off any surface. Damn it, you'll make a fortune. Not anytime soon, I'm afraid. Due to an inerrant instability in its molecular makeup, after 12 hours, the cleanser's component chemicals break down into a series of claw shredding enzymes. Rendering it unsuitable for commercial use. Wait a minute, does that mean your suit's gonna dissolve in 12 hours? Hey gods, no. The solution dissipates into the air after it's applied. But it does mean that after this batch of cleanser ages another 11 hours and 53 minutes, it would eat away this suit faster than a thousand starving moss. And that would be a crisis of unimaginable proportions. Why? Because this suit belongs to Edna's grandfather, who wore it on his wedding day. Poor guy was gunned down just a few years later. Emmett? Well, enough wool gathering. Back to work. That cleanser doesn't seem very portable. It isn't, but this is... A perfume bottle? Yes. No. I mean, yes, it's a perfume bottle, but inside is a concentrated dose of my all-purpose cleanser. With a little luck, this should last me through the next 12 hours before its component chemicals break down into a series of cloth-destroying enzymes. Clever. So, if we take, maybe if we put the oil. I don't want to get that covered in any meth. Can we take it, though? What the hell is that? What? Jacked? <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought I saw a tarantula. Now, now are we good to go, or perhaps we should leave then? <laughs> what? I was just thinking about the future. All that talk about Edna's grandfather made me realize something. 
Please let it be something about lightning. Life can be short, sometimes brutally so. So why not seize a day and grab your happiness while you can? I'm not sure I like where this is going. I was saving this for next Valentine's Day, but why should I? I know what I want. Emmett, no. I'm going to ask Edna to marry me right now. No. Oh, right, right. I'll wait until tonight at the expo. It'll be much more romantic that way. Just think. By this time tomorrow, Edna and I will be engaged and will be the toast of the scientific community. And I owe it all to you. You're welcome. All right, well, let's get out of here then. Hey, Emmett, I've got to go out for a while. I thought Edna sent you to make sure I wasn't getting distracted. Oh, you'll be fine. All right, we're back here. Press button to experience Hill Valley's primeval past. Okay, if this dinosaur is called a Tannenosaurus, I'm gonna... Oh, <laughs> whew. Hit the button, see what happens. Times may be hard in Hill Valley, but our present worries fade into insignificance when we ponder our Pleistocene past. Is the wolf knocking at your door? Be glad he's not a Tyrannosaurus, king of the ancient lizards. And if you find yourself drowning in debt, well, you could be drowning in something a whole lot stickier, like the Hill Valley Tar Pits. This peek into the distant past is brought to you by Lamont's House of Urban, reminding you, fur is forever. We use this? Wait, actually? It's a good thing I did this before Emmett's 12 hour time limit, where the cleanser might have dissolved the fur. Let's slip out of those furs, shall we? Dibs! Alright, now we got the furs. Ooh, so we can give it to her now. We can give her the furs. Hey, Trixie. Are these furs good enough? Well, they're a little ratty, but, uh, they'll work. How about the diamond in the photo album? I'll get him to you. All right, we're not done yet. Tricks. Oh, I did not do anything. Kiddo. Say, wouldn't it be easiest if I just march up to that Strickland dame and give her a smack in the puss? In the well, what? Would be fun to watch. I'm but sorry, what? I wouldn't get her to break up with my friend. Like Emmett. pussy slap? Oh, right. So you got everything you need for your big scene? How about the diamond in the photo? All right, all right. I'll get him to you. I didn't even click on her. I don't know why I did that. I Stop! Oh, smack in well, We don't want no pussy slapping. Well, Dude, I'm just trying to walk away. I'm not clicking on her. Go. There we go. I had to wait for her to, like, finish her wind. Okay. Um, that's done. What do I have in my inventory right now? Like, I guess I could go back. The century looks bright for our fair metropolis. Jump with of us course, 50 years into the future for a peak into the fresh air and the world and we'll put the dream to start with a new generation of time for all the world. Oh! Then revolt down square, a button. Yes, it is. What have I done? I was just messing around. I didn't even think, I didn't even see there was a diamond there. Why there? Hold up. Let's give her the diamond. A fake diamond. Hi, tricks. A network oh, of burrows hi, extends a mile the into the hell? Earth, giving so, future Hill Valley's I'll 10 get million you. citizens plenty of space Ew. to work. Oh, I didn't click on her. And raise their families. Voila. Say, pretty snazzy for a phony rock. Gimme. Keep that up and I may take a real shine to ya. I'd rather you take a fake shine to Emmett. I'm working on it. Now bring me that photo album, and we'll be in business. All right, I gotta get a photo album. Emmett as a baby. Where were his pictures from Emmett as, Emmett as a baby? Because I'm not seeing what's her name anymore, so we probably gotta go back. Probably gotta go back to Emmett's shop and Emmett. look for... Sonny. What? I'm at my wit's end. My portable anti-stick anti-stain formula has disappeared. Can't you make more? There's no time. Don't worry. I'm sure it'll turn up soon. Good. There's no way in God's green earth that I'm heading to that expo without it. So we got to do that, but we also have to find a baby pictures. There's got to be something around here. 
I do remember seeing something like right here, right? Now go back. What's this? It's the placard we'll be putting in front of our booth at the expo. The scientist that caught Kid Tannen? A small exaggeration, but Edna says it'll attract investors. What do you think of the picture? You look a little... constipated. What? Edna said I looked intense. Yeah, intensely focused on taking it. <laughs> I get the picture. Hmm. I'll have to find a better one. Unfortunately, there's a lot to choose from. Heavy. Extremely. Mother has been rather obsessive about photographically cataloging my life. And that's about every parent. All right, so that that worked out. Let's just grab the photo book and pick one. Damn it! I've got an idea. What? Why don't I take your photo album over to Edna so she can pick out your new picture? That's a great idea. She's got a better eye for these things than I do anyway. Thanks, pal. Don't mention it. Awesome. All right, well, let's jet. We're done here. I brought him its photo album like you asked. Let's see. Gee, he's not bad looking. In an egghead kind of way. Remember, I don't want you seducing him for real. I ain't a cradle robber, kiddo. So, you got everything you need for your big scene? Everything except for your friend. Emmett Brown, redheaded guy about yay high. He'll be the one with Edna Strickland. Not for long, he won't. Great. Alright, that's done. What about the DeLorean? Doc said to tell him when the light on his diagnostic thing he went green. Hey, the light's green. That means Doc could take the DeLorean out again. Excellent. So what I'll do then... Can I put this in the in the car? Just smuggle it? There you go. It'll be safe in there. Alright, now let's tell Doc that it all is good. Oh, they're gonna make me go around the back. I need to talk to you. Excuse me, my dear. Yes? About that gizmo you've got hooked up to the DeLorean? The chronometric analyzer? Yeah, the light's gone green. Wonderful. If the systems check out, I should be able to take it for another test run. I've got to run a short end, Miss Strickland. I suggest you think about what I've been saying. Oh, I will. So therefore, it should be 12 hours. Right? Because if you said six hours the first time... When did you land this time? Nine hours and 37 minutes ago. Ouch. Frankly, it started to get a little difficult to avoid running into myself. Still, the time jump yielded some interesting new data on the flux field. I'll run some more tests and we'll see what we find. Do I have to waste more time or is that going to be enough? Let's see if we can talk to him again. Hold on. I need to talk to you. Excuse me, my dear. Not much of luck. Yes? It's green! Your chronometer's gone green again. Excellent. Let's hope this time my test run is a success. I'm sorry to desert you again. Yes, well, you've left me with plenty to think about. But it wasn't even green, I don't think. Unless it was, I don't know. There, now it's ready. Yeah, any luck this time? Depends what you mean by luck. My arrival time was off again. By how much? Eight hours this time. Gave me the chance to take in three showings of Frankenstein. Good movie. A bit implausible from a scientific perspective, but I can see how my younger self would have been mesmerized. What about the DeLorean? Oh, yes. I did get one critical piece of information. The chromium elements in my circuits became unstable during the temporal shift. I should replace them with titanium. Great! Now, unfortunately, titanium won't become commercially available till the coal process is perfected in nine years. Nine years? But there may be another solution. I'm going to fire up the chronometric analyzer again. Then, while I'm storing it, there you can... Uh-oh. Where did it go? The lab! Ah! You better get down there before she makes the situation impossible. I'll tend to the DeLorean. All right, I got to get that oil can ASAP. Oh, he's got it. Age to perfection. And I just got to flank him and, like, 
squish it on there. Hey Emmett, I'm back. Uh oh. Uh, hello. <clears throat> oh my. You know, I thought you were coming down here to keep Emmett focused on his invention. No, oh, she is. But she's generously scheduled brief canoodling breaks every 45 minutes to keep my mind fresh. Time's up, dear. Let's get back to work. Shall we? Now, Mr. Crockett, what can I do for you? Um, yes. Mr. Sagan says he needs to talk to you back at the high school. He does? Whatever for? He says he's got a lead on the speakeasy arsonist. He does, does he? Well, I'm not sure anyone cares about that old story anymore. But I suppose I could spare a few minutes in the service of solving a crime. Will you be all right without me, sweetheart? It'll be tough, but I think I'll muddle through. Try to keep him focused. He's so easily distracted. Gotta use that to our advantage. Don't I wish. All right, now I'm not sure. Can I spray it on him? Or do I need to get him dirty again? Hmm. There it is. I've been looking all over for my portable anti-stick, anti-stain formula. Where'd you find it? Um, out by the trash. That's strange. I haven't been out there for hours. Oh, well. Are you gonna spray your jacket? It's looking a little dusty. Not until it's really dirty. This cleanser doesn't grow on trees, you know. Well, some of the ingredients grow on trees, but the rest are synthesized polycarbonate really detergent dirty? blends. I can do that. I'll wait until you're at the expo to show Edna what a suit-destroying slob you can be. Well, that's about it. It is? Yep. As soon as I get all this stuff loaded into the truck, I'll be ready for the expo. Want to lend me a hand? Uh, how about I go tell Edna you're coming? I'll, uh, get her ready for you to pop the question. Good thinking. Go on ahead. I'll meet you there. I really hope this works. Otherwise, it'd cause big trouble. Impressive that he could do that with dress shoes on. Doc! Where's Edna? She's inside, setting up her booth. It's almost time for the opening ceremony. Holy jeez, I better work fast. I think I got it all worked out. When it all comes together, Edna will think you're the worst guy in town. I just need a couple more pieces. Well, don't go to too much trouble. What do you mean? Oh. You thought of an easier way to break them up? Not exactly. You see, I, I've been mulling things over, and... Uh, in the timeline you're from... The right timeline? Yes, yes. Uh, I've got a wife. A great wife, and Clara, and kids, and a dog, and a bitch in time train, and... And Edna? How does her story turn out? How does she end up? Don't say anything. Oh, well, Edna ends up... You got, um... You gotta lie. She's, uh, she's doing great. She's got a full life, lots of friends, always busy. She's got a fellow? Yes. Uh, sure, uh, lots of them. Just one. Lots of them? She's a tramp? No, no, uh, what I meant to say was... Let's start over. How does Edna end up? You're not really supposed to know these things in advance. It's, it's bad luck. But you told me how my story turns out. They make yeah, you do but that? It's not as if I'll be in a position to do anything about it once my younger counterpart's destiny has shifted. I imagine I'll be folded into the new timeline, and I'll probably lose all memory of the old one. Maybe. So tell me, just to satisfy my curiosity, what's going to become of Edna? But it's see, yeah, they gave you the illusion of choice. They do do that. To be honest, she ends up kind of sad. Sad? She lives with some cats in a dinky little apartment, and she spends most of her time yelling out her window at people, and collecting newspapers, and living in the past. I see.
Perhaps we've been going about this problem the wrong way. Do we really have to completely obliterate my timeline so we can restore yours? Doc? Maybe we could have the best of both worlds. I could be with Edna, but it could be a little bit, you know, more healthy. Can you hear yourself? Do, do you know what you're saying? Let me remind you. Doc! She tried to erase your brain. Oh. She was terrible, no argument. Horrible. Oh, but she started out with such pure intentions. So did Nero. I don't believe this. All I'm saying is, let's stop and take a breath. This elaborate plan to derail my younger self's love life, is the short-term misery worth the long-term gain? Maybe we can find a third way. One where everybody wins. What do you think? Uh... No! I'm sorry, Doc. I can't go along with what you're saying. You don't belong with Edna. So you're determined to break us up, in spite of my stated wishes? Basically, yeah. Then there's nothing left to say? Really, dude? Wait, where are you going? Why should it matter to you? Aren't you planning on overriding me? This just got really complicated. Great. All right. Well, let's do this. We still have to do it. Let's pour the oil on him. Unless there is a third way. Uh, two. <laughs> hey, Emmett, what's keeping you? No. Oh, hello, Sonny. I guess I've got a mild case of stage fright. I'm about to play my big scene, you know. No telling how Edna's gonna react. You've, uh, got something on your suit. Oh, so I have. Anti-stain formula, work your magic. Uh-oh. Emmett! It worked! Just in the nick of time. Um, step back now. We're gonna need a little space here. Oh, aren't you a vision? Like something that descended from the heavens. Yes, I'm feeling a bit elevated at the moment. There's something I've just got to ask Wait, you. Wait, your tie's a bit crooked. I've been holding it inside for weeks now, and I've simply got to get it off my chest. Oh. What the hell? It actually uh -oh. is working. Oh, my snap! My grandfather's suit! My formula! Oh. Oh, look! Turn your head! I'll be right back, and we can try this all over and again. And it's Lathrop Brown! Huh? Trixie Trotter? How do you know this woman? I don't! I mean, I listened to some of her records, and I may have taken a picture or two yes. of her, but I... Go on! Deny to the world that you know me! Perhaps it is true, but I know you all too well. What is going on here? You rich boys are all alike. You think material possessions can compensate for a broken heart. Well, you can take back your furs, and take back this gaudy diamond, Ouch. too! I don't need your expensive presents. I need you. And more importantly, little Emmett Jr. needs you. Oh, oh my. my. I don't Edna me. Apparently, you are not the man I took you for. But I am, see? The mental alignment meter proves it. I am the man you fell in love with. Let me see that card. Ouch. I should have known. A degenerate criminal. What? Get out of my sight! I never want to see you again! That was rough, Emmett. I'm sorry you had to go through it, but things are gonna be okay. You and me can... Emmett? That 
went off great, huh? Yeah. Maybe too great. It's one of those jams where we're gonna have to be like, yo, man, let's go see a movie. You'll take your mind off of it. Damn it! Unless, of course, Doc messed with the past. Damn it! Go away! Come on! Where are you? I'm sorry you had to go through that scene at the expo. Things didn't work out the way you expected, but everything's gonna turn out okay. See, I, I know how this story turns out, and... The story is over. <gasps> what the hell? Damn it, Emmett. Listen to me, Emmett. Do exactly as I say. Don't do anything. Why not? Listening to you has worked out so well for me thus far. <sighs> they say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense, but I don't care. Stop! <sighs> what are you doing up here? Don't jump! I wasn't gonna jump! Uh, then what do you- This is where I come when I want to think. Oh. When I want to be alone. Oh. Well, don't let me bother you. Go ahead and think. Can't you take a hint? I don't want you here. I don't need you. You don't know what you need. And you do? Yes. As a matter of fact, yeah. You need... Get your mind off your problems. Go see a movie. I hear Frankenstein's pretty good. Frankenstein. I tell you that my very life force is drained away, and you want to talk about Hollywood monster movies. It's a very inspirational monster movie. Especially the scene where they bring the monster to life. There's this big gurney that lifts him up into the air, and, and see, there's this wild storm going on, and lightning crashing everywhere. It's amazing. And you just got to see it, Emmett. It'll change your life. Look at my helmet. Which light is flashing? Yellow. Apathy. I don't care about movies. I don't care about anything anymore. And I never will. Don't give me that. You care. We're all depending on you to pull it together. Why? You're gonna put Hill Valley on the map. Oh, please. My greatest fear is that I'll end up frittering my life away in this miserable town. Uh... You still care about inventing things. <laughs> inventing is overrated. 99% hype, 10% fraud. Name one invention that ever did anybody any good. Uh, how about... The light bulb? You got it on your head. Think about Edison and the light bulb. That was a great invention. Yeah, might have been. If there was anything in this miserable world... God damn it, he's so salty. The automobile was a great invention, right? You love cars. Yes. If I'm lucky, I may be struck by one today. God, he's so salty. The telephone. Think how that invention has revolutionized the whole world. Yes. Now a person can be rejected long distance. Illusion of choice. Help me out here. You're getting on my nerves, Crockett. At least you would be if I still cared about anything. Me! Care about me, Doc. <laughs> you? Y yeah. You. You did this to me. Uh oh. Did what? I was perfectly content drudging away in my dad's law office. You show up out of nowhere, get me all excited about inventing, and disappear. Two months later, you show up again, you trick me into making a hero out of myself and getting involved with Edna Strickland. Then you appear a third time and pretend to be my friend just so you can yank the rug out from under me and send me sprawling into the dirt. Okay, I can work with that. Damn. I love you, Sonny Crockett. Or is that even your real name? Marty. My name is Marty. Oh, so everything you've told me has been a lie. More or less. Why? Why did you ruin my life? For the hell of it? Edna was no good for you. She was leading you down the wrong path. I see. You had my best interests at heart. Yeah. Just like my father. 
But there's more to it, see? Your father doesn't know your true path. And you do? Yes! How is it that I could create a mental alignment meter and yet fail to realize that you are completely delusional? Oh, what does it matter? The world is absurd. No, I know exactly what I'm doing. See? I know this may sound crazy, but you gotta listen. In 1985, you're gonna invent a time machine. You're right. It sounds crazy. I'm just trying to explain where I'm coming from. He's gonna get hit with a lightning bolt. I know it. In 1985, you're gonna... Oh. You're right. I'm just trying to... Okay, apparently I have to say this. I did it for fun. You ruined my life for fun? Yeah, that's how I get my kicks. You bastard. And all that time you spent building up my dreams telling me I was going to be a great scientist. Maybe we got to keep pissing him off. We're doing it the wrong way. Yeah, what a laugh. Dreams are only for people with guts enough to follow them. You're saying I don't have guts? You? <laughs> Look at you. What do you know? A person like you? You don't know the first thing about me. I have more dreams in my little finger than you'll ever have. Hey, daydreams don't count. Daydreams? That's what they said to Edison. That's what they said to Einstein. That's what they said to Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah, and look what they accomplished. I'm sick of people telling me what I can and can't do. First my father, then Edna, now you. Listen to me, good. From now on, I'm living my life my way. I'm taking my own advice and I'm following my own ideas. My ideas, do you hear me? My ideas. But it's got, I've got it. Got what? The solution, my invention. I know how to make it work. The mental alignment meter? No, no, my airborne personal transport device. The rocket car? Not rockets, not rockets at all. That was my mistake. The basic idea was sound, but the propulsion system was unworkable. But the lightning, the lightning! Suddenly the answer is clear. It came to me all at once, like, like... A bolt of lightning? Exactly! Static electricity! Super ionized static electricity powering the asynchronous oscillation of frictionless plates inside the... What's this stupid thing doing on my head? Emmett, you're, you're, you're you again! Here, I've been wasting my time with silly mind-reading tricks when there's serious science to be done. <gasps> and the expo begins at 8! <laughs> Let's get the hell out of here before anything else happens. What? I said, let's get out of here before anything... <gasps> oh, no! We gotta save him! What the hell is gonna help him here? Can we just pull him up? It's not going anywhere. Wow, Marty. What can we do? We can't reach him. Oh, let's go back up. Can we talk to him from here? Emmett! What? Got anything useful on you? Only my wallet. Oh, and this portable anti-stick, anti-stain formula. Oops. Perfect. I'll use that. Don't hang in there. Very we pick that thing up and like essentially roast the statue. But then we gotta have a counterweight, otherwise he's going for a, a bit of a drop. Emmett's solution. This stuff's dangerous. Here we go. All right, now we can go back up. Hang on. Now we should be able to swing, right? Now that the weight's off of it. Let's go for get some momentum. Oh, it's not gonna let me. Oh, you can do it manually, look. Whoa, here we go. Got him. Ah. Boom. Gotcha. Let's get out of here. Your pants, they're stuck. Do something before we're crushed. Ah. 
Crap, hold on. Get his pant leg. What are you doing? Trust me. Hold on. <laughs> what did you say your name was again? Marty. Marty? Thanks. Don't mention it. <laughs> the catalyst will need to be made out of tungsten given the temperature within the converter will no doubt be intense. We'll have to harvest the filaments from all the light bulbs in my house. Invention? You think you can finish it before the end of the expo? Think? I've got to. My future depends on it. Then let's go. Of course, the oscillating plates will need to be calibrated precisely. Even the slightest misalignment could cause the magnetic field to fluctuate in intensity, leading to sudden shifts in polarity. The results could conceivably be catastrophic. Ah, who cares? My thought exactly. Science should be messy and unpredictable, or else where's the fun of it? Need a lift? Mr. Sagan, got the kinks worked out of your car of the future? Uh, not all of them, but at least the DeLorean's mundane terrestrial functionality remains intact. As usual, I have not the slightest idea what you're talking about. In fact, you remind me of someone... someone I used to... <laughs> there, there, my dear, don't worry. I'm sure it will all turn out well in the end. Maybe for everyone else, but I suddenly feel very much like someone who's going to be alone and unloved for a very long time. Maybe I should get a cat. Nonsense. I can state with nearly 100% certainty that you're going to have a long and fulfilling life. How can you know that? I think you'll find I know almost everything worth knowing about you and young Emmett and his friends. Tell me, how much do you know about Sonny Crockett? Oh, god damn. No way. I never thought this would be a problem. Oh, god. Oh, that's intriguing. I gotta know what's gonna go down. Of course, we will finish that puppy up. Doc, you noob. Let me explain it again. I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. It was science. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. If Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Doc. Whoa. That's insane. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so... I never thought this would be a problem, but that's a pretty crazy way and pretty interesting turn of events. We'll have to see how things go in the final episode, which will be coming up very soon. Don't worry, I won't make you guys wait as long as I did for this episode. But I do thank you guys very, very much for watching this one. If you guys enjoyed, do me a favor. Give that like button a slap. And be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, be sure to like and follow my pages on social media. Very active on there. Great way for you guys to get in touch with me outside of YouTube. If you want to get yourself a shirt or hoodie, there's a link to my Spreadshirt shop in the description as well. Thank you guys so much again. Take it easy. Have a fantastic day. I'll be seeing you soon for more content. But until then, let's hand things over to Noxhill. Have a good one, guys. Who's the man with the plan? Hmm. If you feel trouble, wild and wild, don't need violent and hit you. 8,000. Wait a minute, hold that stylist style. Dan. Goddamn, Billy Jack. We still riding tires flat. I hear them sirens, sea shots flying. So we driving by your back. If they ain't vibing, lie with that. Got me dressed up in all black. What up? Hood up, and I see them haters. Try to run with us, they don't need inhalers. Gotta breathe them hard just like the beta players. Grab your respirators. Night invaders get light sabered. Mass on for the shooters. Move like trash. To bed intruder, got that glocking, got them woofers. Just press play, I'll keep it moving. Who is Knox? Who you damn fools? Keep it fresh like canned food. There ain't nothing we can't do, so tune into that damn kill. Yeah, it was never ever a game.